further into nuclear chemistry you will learn in this video about binding energy and the neutron proton ratio so we have to find out how come a nucleus is stable with so many positive charges all residing in one small area so that is what you'll be learning about this now stability of the nucleus so let's see how come the nucleus is stable nucleus has positive protons and neutral neutrons we are familiar with this so before we ident and understand how the nucleus is stable we will find out what are the forces which exist in a nucleus the one force which exists in a nucleus is the proton proton repulsion the repulsion between the positive charges and then along with the power repulsion uh, charges we do have certain a short range attractions inside the nucleus that is between a proton and a proton a proton and a neutron and a neutron and a neutron so the stability of the nucleus actually depends on the difference between the coulombic repulsion and the short, short range attraction so if the repulsion is greater than the attraction the nucleus is uh, unstable and it will disintegrate but if the repulsion is less than the attraction nucleus will be stable therefore for all radioactive nucleus the repulsion is greater than attraction that is the reason they are all uh, radioactive or they break up into some other stable elements so let us just see uh, what are the uh, things which make a nucleus stable the first one we call it as a magic number all the nucleus which has 2 8 20 50 82 and 126 proton or neutron will be stable this we call as magic number this is somewhat similar to the uh, complete octet in an electronic configuration the second thing which makes a uh, nucleus stable is all those nucleus which has even number of proton and neutron if both are even p and n both can be even and at least one of them is even they are more stable a uh, odd proton and odd neutron nucleus is the least stable and the third factor is the n over p ratio if it is closer to 1 then that nucleus will be very stable an example is oxygen uh, 8 or carbon 6 where the number of neutrons and protons are same and they are all very stable nuclei and uh, an unstable nuclei elements with atomic number greater than 83 are all unstable unstable mean they will all be radioactive and uh, all those element which has an n over p ratio uh, greater than 1 and less than 1.5 will be beta emitters and if the n over p ratio is greater than 1.5 they will be alpha emitters we will do one question on binding energy calculate the binding energy in joules per nucleon of copper 2963 and the atomic mass of copper is given atomic mass of proton atomic mass of neutron is also given and the conversion unit of atomic mass uh, unit to kilogram is also given the first thing we do is we have to use the einstein equation delta e equals delta mc square and uh, the first thing we will do is we will calculate the mass difference and after that we will substitute into that equation and calculate the binding energy so calculate the mass difference first get the mass of the nucleus from the number of protons and neutrons copper 2963 has 29 protons and 34 neutrons so 29 protons i took it from the atomic number and 34 we get By, by subtracting 63 minus 29 that gives me the number of neutrons and be careful to put the correct atomic mass for the proton and the uh, neutron and the mass of the nucleus comes as 63.521535 this should have been the mass if the there was no forces in it and we had only proton and neutrons but the atomic mass of copper is found to be 62.91367 and therefore the difference in the mass is calculated and that comes as 0.607865 since whenever a nucleus is formed energy is released this is basically negative but we don't put it in because we will just write it as 
this much energy is released released therefore uh, we are taking only positive value in all the questions we are going to calculate so i have calculated the mass difference so let's proceed further and see how to calculate the binding energy so after calculating the mass difference let's proceed further to calculate the binding energy and as you have learnt earlier the binding energy uh, is equal is related to the mass difference by delta m c square so in that equation the uh, the unit of c is in meters per second and therefore the mass unit which is in amu is converted into kilograms by dividing it by 6.022 to the power of 26 and i get the value of uh, energy as 9.1 to the power of minus 10 and the unit of this is joules because if you look at the unit it is kilogram meter square second square that is actually joules and uh, sometime they ask you binding energy in different forms the next one they can ask you is calculate the binding energy per nucleon so in such case this and if you look at the copper 6329 is what we are considering has 63 nucleons therefore binding energy per nucleon will be this uh, energy in joules divided by 63 and that comes as 1.4 to the power of minus 11 joules per nucleon and sometimes they can ask you the binding energy per mole when such a question is asked uh, multiply the energy you got by the avogadro number 6.022 to the power of 23 that will give me the binding energy per mole and then they can sometime ask you to convert the binding energy into mega electron volt and uh, uh, one uh, atomic mass unit is 931 mega electron volt so it is a direct conversion take the mass difference and times it by 931 mega electron volt and that gives me the binding energy in mega electron volt that is 566 mega electron volt therefore in case of binding energy you should learn how to calculate just not the binding energy and also express it in different units one in plain joules then joules per nucleon which you divided by the total number of protons and neutrons and uh, per mole you multiply by the avogadro number and if it is asked in uh, mega electron volts multiply the mass difference by 931 